Hey, Pops. Hey, what? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Uh, who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange? Orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say banana? Oh, <laughs> I am glad. <laughs> hey, Pop! Yep? What does a cloud wear under his raincoat? Well, I don't know. Thunderwear. Thunderwear. <laughs> <laughs> that one's the best one. Hey, Pop! Hey, what? Knock, knock. Who's there? Things who? Big the doorbell that's not working. Things the <laughs> doorbell. <laughs> hey, Peanut. Yeah? What do you call a boomerang that won't come back? What? A stick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pop. Hey, what? Um, what happens if you tell a joke to an Easter egg? I don't know. What? It cracks up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bloody. Hey, Pop. Hey, what? Why did Kyle cross the road? I don't know. Why? Because he wanted to get to the movie theater. Get it? Moo and a feeder? Movie feeder! <laughs> That's hey, Pop! Hey, what? What can you always count on? I don't know. What? Your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't even have fingers. <laughs> hey, Pop! Hey, what? What do you call an elephant that never takes a bath? I don't know. What? A smell of it. <laughs> hey, Peanut. Hey, what? Knock, knock. Who's there? Jess. Jess who? Just open the door and let me in. <laughs> <laughs> out. Hey, Pops. Hey, what? How does Superstore stay cool? I don't know. How? They have lots of fans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peanut. Hey, what? Knock, knock. Who's there? Garden. Garden who? Garden the treasure. <laughs> Arr. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pop. Hey, what? Where do people learn to make ice cream? I don't know. Where? Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pop. Hey, what? What are the baby corn say to the mama corn? I don't know. What? Where's popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pops. <laughs> hey, Peanut. Hey, what? What did the salt say to the pepper? I don't know what. Hey. What's shaking? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, Pops. Hey, what? What do snowmen do on a weekend? Uh, I don't know. What? They chill. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pops. Hey, what? What did the turkey say to the computer? Oh, I have no idea. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pops! Hey, what? Why is it called at Christmas? I don't know. Why? Because it's December. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peanut. Hey, what? 
Knock, knock. Who's there? Yeah. Yahoo. Yahoo? Wow, you're really excited about Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Hey, Peanut. Hey, what? How do you get a squirrel to like you? I don't know. How do you get a squirrel to like you? Act like a nut. <laughs> Hey, what? How do we know the ocean is friendly? Hmm. I don't know. How do we know the ocean is friendly? It waves. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, ocean. Hey, Pop. Hey, what? What is a cat's favorite church song? I don't know. What is a cat's favorite church song? Yes, Jesus loves me. <laughs> hey, Pops! Hey, what? What do you call a funny mountain? Hmm. I don't know. What do you call a funny mountain? Hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pops! Hey, what? Where do fish keep their money? I don't know. Where do fish keep their money? In our river bank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pops. Hey, what? What kind of haircut do bees get? Mm, I have no idea what haircuts bees like to get. They get buzz cuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peanut. Hey, what? Why did the banana go to the doctor? I don't know. Why did the banana go to the doctor? Because it wasn't feeling well. <laughs> hey, Peanut. Hey, what? What job did Noah want before he built the ark? I don't know. What job did Noah want before he built the ark? He wanted to be in... Architect. <laughs> hey, Pops. Hey, what? What did the volcano say to the other volcano? Hmm. Well, I don't know. What did the volcano say to the other volcano? I love you. <laughs> Are you almost ready? The show's about to start. Yes, almost. <clears throat> Is that really necessary? All the professionals do it. <laughs> You're right. I do feel more ready. What else do you do to prepare? I put on my biggest smile. Like this? That's great. Now, now fix your hair. Oh, okay. Wait, I don't have any. Here. It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Naveen the New Shoes, with a message about the armor of God. And our friend Fruitcake with the history of armor. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Welcome everyone! We have the coolest pair of kicks joining us today. The only new shoes we need, Naveen! He's here to talk about being prepared and ready for the day by putting on the armor of God. God has armor? Where can we buy some? No, the armor of God is not something you buy. They are spiritual symbols. In Ephesians, Paul says, Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Oh. So, it's not a real belt or a pair of shoes. That's right. They are symbols. We should be prepared with a shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. That sounds like a pretty powerful outfit. It is. When we ask God to make us ready for whatever comes our way, He equips us with what we need. And we have a surprise for you, Naveen. Your twin sister, Nava, is here. She even brought a picture of the day you were born. 
guys are so cute. The perfect pair. You look like you're ready to take on the world. Okay, now I'm ready too. Cause this really is a powerful outfit. I got my truth belt, righteousness armor, peaceful shoes, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, and sword of the spirit. See, you can have confidence that you are ready for the day because you prepared yourself by putting on the armor of God. Agreed. But back to Nava and Naveen, how do you keep your colors so bright? Good question. How do you? Ah, oh, bummer. I really wanted to hear your answers. Thanks for being here and ready, Nava and Naveen. And Fruitcake, the history of armor sounded awesome. Yeah, just like how our history with you is awesome. Talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. One day, as Micah was reading his Bible, he discovered something truly amazing. Six pieces of armor to defend himself against spiritual attacks. The armor of God. Now Micah's spiritual battles will never be the same. Put on the armor of God. There's a battle within and the enemy is sin. Put on the armor of God. It's the perfect metaphor for a spiritual war. The Belt of Truth. It's a regular day at school when Micah learns that there's a test later today. There's a test today? On what? Quizzes. Oh, it's a quiz? No, it's a test. A quiz on tests? No, a test on quizzes. I'm confused. So let me guess, you didn't study. For the test quiz? Quiz test! <sighs> Looks like we're gonna have to help you study during recess. Ah, but recess is for playtime. I mean, uh, I'll go get my books. Hmm, test on quizzes. Or was it quiz on tests? Huh? What's this stuff in my locker? Your locker? It's mine now. What are you talking about? Look at all my stuff, Micah. I have so much stuff. I couldn't possibly fit all my school supplies, fashionable clothes, fine art, and Uber slushy machine into one locker, so I took yours. Slushy machine? You have one. Hmm, that's pretty... <coughs> Wait a minute. You can't do this. That's my locker. Who are you to tell me, peasant boy? I'm so important because I have all the stuff. And look at you. You've got nothing. You're nothing. You don't deserve a locker. I'm nothing? Micah has just been told a lie that he's not important because he doesn't have the things Hans does. Will he believe it? Find out when we return after these messages. Hey there, friend. Do your pants fall down often? No. Ah! Recent studies have shown a correlation between lies and fallen pants. Yes! But don't worry, we have just a solution. The Belt of Truth. Belt of Truth? The Belt of Truth comes with the knowledge of who you are in Christ. It holds everything together so you can know that you have value. It's snug, my pants don't fall down, and my life has purpose. Thanks, Belt of Truth. Keep your pants up with the Belt of Truth. Belt of Truth is not a replacement for a real belt. If you develop rashes or hide from wearing the Belt of Truth, consult a pastor because that's just weird. You've got nothing, so you're nothing. <laughs> Micah has just been told a lie that he's not important. Will he believe it? What will he do? It's time to suit up. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Belt of truth. Lies can't hurt me, Hans. My value doesn't come from stuff. It comes from God who made me and loves me. And that's the truth. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm taking my textbook out of my locker. You fool! So is a load-bearing textbook! <laughs> <laughs> John 8.32 says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Micah, you think you can make a fool out of me? You're going to... I heard my name. <laughs> Whoa, Hans, are you okay? Yes, yes, I'm fine! Will you let me brood in peace? Oh, right, sorry. Brood away. He's going to pay for humiliating me. Mark my words. <laughs> Next time on the Armor of God, the chest plate of righteousness.
There are stories in the Bible that are told when you're a child. But as soon as you're a grown-up, they no longer seem to show up. I guess grown-ups don't like action and they find no satisfaction. In these famous children's stories, do they think they are too boring? How about David and Goliath? There a stone took down a giant orphan. Jonah fled by sail, but was swallowed by a veil. And Noah's up, let's not forget a flood from God is kind of it. Gale and the lions did say God is sturdy, did not in our superhero sense. It's all he cut his hair, lots of dollar when the traffic all the blood on the fall of your goals. Yeah, I'm free, you know what I the show. So let's go back to the basics. Oh, was that supposed to be recording? What? Episode 2, Daniel and the Robotic Lion. Gooba, it's Daniel in the Lion's Den. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Basics. As always, I am Professor Zeitreis, and this is my trusted assistant, Gooba. And this is Gertrude, my trusted assistant. Ah, yes, Gertrude. Sadly, the time machine can't revisit time periods we've already been to, or we might run into ourselves, creating an unknown consequence. As a result, Gertrude has become a permanent part of the team. With robotic superpowers. Well, I wanted to make sure she had a great quality of life. So, I gave her one super upgrade. Robotic braces. Who is he walking? Thereby eliminating the one major liability that most likely drove our species to extinction. Those poor dance birds, they never know what hit them. She's the third member of the TTT, the time traveling trio. We've already got badges and a theme song. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, what's most important is that by allowing her to live in our time under close observation, her survival shouldn't disrupt the space-time continuum. So long as she keeps a low profile. <laughs> Speaking of her profile, she's now on the internet. She can be found on most social media sites under the name Gertrude 6000 BC. Hashtag new in town. Hashtag old school. Hashtag the flood life. Say cheese, Gertie. Ah! What is this, Gooba? That is not keeping a low profile. But she only has one follower, which is me. That seems pretty low. Hashtag first friend. Hashtag best friend. Gooba, a low profile is her not being on the internet at all. We can't have people noticing a new species of bird. You need to erase that at once. But that's not fair at all. Hashtag not fair at all. And Gooba, for the love of schnitzel, please stop saying the word hashtag. <gasps> Hashtag okay. Now, children, for today's time-traveling adventure, I've chosen a famous children's Bible story that is so very close to my heart. We all face moments in time where what other people want us to do will not line up with what God wants us to do. In those moments, we must put our trust in God and continue to follow His path, even if we end up in a lion's den, just like Daniel. Lions Den! Hashtag what? Also, the Bible says that Daniel is visited by an angel. Can you believe it? <laughs> I would love to have a first-hand account of seeing one. On that note, to the time machine! Okay, children, we will now prepare the time machine for travel. Last trip was a disaster. So Gooba and I have implemented a checklist. That's correct. The time traveling trio checklist. Item one, set the timer for Daniel. Timer is set. Check. Item two, set the time machine for Lion. Lion is set. Check. By turning the time machine into a lion, we will be able to seamlessly blend into the din, becoming almost indistinguishable from the other lions. <laughs> In addition, starting with this trip, we will always have the time machine transform while traveling through time. We must not chance having our transformation be spotted. 
And last but not least, item number C. I will not exit the time machine, no matter what. Precisely. Check. Unless I have to. What? No. That's not part of it. Professor, shouldn't buckling up be a checklist item? Why? We are both buckled up. We surely won't forget twice. Well, Gertie isn't buckled up. Go! Oh, no. Go? We are the time-traveling trio. The Professor and Gertie and Leo. We are the time-traveling trio. The Professor and We have arrived and are blending in perfectly with our surroundings. By my calculations, we should be inside the very lion's den that Daniel is thrown into when he disobeys the king. I'll be honest. I feel like you've done a pretty bad job of explaining this story to me and the children. Who is Daniel? And why is he going into a lion's den? Does he work for a zoo? Or is this some kind of a treasure hunt scenario where the lions are guarding an artifact? Well, Gooba, my hope is that we will be able to witness the story unfold, providing you and the children with all of the information we need. All we need to do is wait and watch, and hopefully see an angel. It seems my robotic lion doesn't blend in as well as I thought. It's probably because Gertie's legs are sticking up out of the back of it. Also, her legs are like ten times the size of us inside. That's weird. But Einstein, that's because outside the time machine you grow into normal size. She must have gotten stuck during the transformation somewhere inside the time machine. I must find her at once. Gooba, you're in charge until I return. Uh, in charge of what? <sighs> this is new? Watching for Daniel! Yes, sir. Wait, what does Daniel look like? Well, I guess it's up to me then. Keep your eyes peeled, Goober. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout in the lion den. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout. We time traveled again. picture of what he might look like. He's probably got two arms, two legs, and two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and some hair, and a beard, and a shirt. This is Daniel, so he's not hard to find. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout in the lion den. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout. We time traveled again. I don't know the story. He must defeat lions, or maybe he's stronger as in a disguise, or a superhero from all of my comics who wears the one cape and is able to fly. He's on the lookout for Daniel. He's on the lookout while I look for the bird. He's on the lookout for Daniel. I need to find her. The robot looks absurd. Now I'll draw in valleys facing an army of chocolate monsters that'll throw chocolate pies, but they has got no problem melting them down using all of his powers like lasers for eyes. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout in the lion's den. I'm on the lookout for Daniel. I'm on the lookout. We time traveled again. These motors are too loud. I found Gertrude. Please let me know if something starts happening. I just said that. Professor? Daniel from Judah, I, King Darius, issued a written edict that stated that anyone who prays to any god or human during the next 30 days except to me shall be thrown into the lion's den. 
You now stand accused by my administrators and satraps of continuing to pray to your God three times a day. How do you respond to this? King Darius, I, Daniel of Judah, do not deny praying to the one and only true God. Just as I have always prayed to him three times daily, I continued to do so during the 30 days of your written edict. My king, I must inform you that this will continue, even at the threat of being thrown into the lion's den. Then I must honor the written edict and follow through with the punishment. You shall be thrown into the lion's den for one entire night. At dawn I shall return. May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Ah, oh, Professor, you may want to get up here. I can't hear you, Gooba. I've already told you that. Gertrude is incredibly stuck. I may need your help soon. Oh boy, Professor, this Daniel guy sure is in trouble. Hey, it's kind of dark in here, isn't it? Wait, who said that? Who's there? Oh, sorry. Pretend I'm not here. I just want to see how God gets you out of this bed. Those are wise words, stranger. Our God is an awesome God, and he works in mysterious ways. You know, that is so true. I once lost my hat and couldn't find it for an entire day. So what did I do? I prayed to God. Sure enough, after that prayer, I found it. It was on the top of my head the whole time. The power of prayer. The power of prayer indeed. Thank you. Gooba, I need your help now. Get down here. B but Daniel just came down here. We might miss something. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to show King Darius and his people your power and greatness. Please protect me tonight so I may leave this lion's den and speak of the one true God. Gooba, I need your help now. Get down here. Oh, all right. Gooba, finally. I think if we can unhook her braces, we can get her legs back into the time machine. But what about her braces? Won't they be stuck in this time period? No, Gooba, they are completely fused to the time machine itself and should travel back with us when we go. For now, I just want to get her down so she don't miss anything. Oh, you already have. What? Get off of me, but... Why did you tell me? I tried. What have I missed? Have you seen Daniel? Yep. And what about King Darius ordering Daniel to be thrown into the pit because he broke the written edict? Yep. Then Daniel was thrown down into the den. They covered it up with a hole. It got really dark. And then we talked a little bit about my hat. You what? Then all the lions started approaching him. He started praying, and a bright light started shining all around him. Ah, and then the angel appeared? Well, I don't know. I came down here. What? Gooba, why didn't you stay for the angel? You said, and I repeat, I need your help immediately, Gooba. Get down here now. Ah, Gooba, we must hurry. Gooba, we missed everything. Oh, including the angel. It's all I ever wanted to see. <sighs> well, technically, you missed everything. I saw most of it until you made me come help you. Hashtag your fault. How long were we down there? Uh, has it been an entire night? I must pass differently inside the time machine. Daniel, son of the living God. Has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? May the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. 
they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Lift Daniel out of the den! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Everything worked out just the way it was supposed to. Even though we didn't see the angel, at least we saw Daniel exit the pit triumphantly. For me, that is good enough. Come, let us be off! Wait, Professor, I don't think it's over. It looks like some more people are gathering at the top of the pit. Ah, well, Gubav, for this children's friendly show, it is over. We must leave at once. It seems like they're about to go in the pit. Oh, dear, it's definitely over for all of us. Setting the time and date as fast as I can. Yep, they are definitely going in. <gasps> hey, maybe it opens at the petting zoo now. Those are the administrators and satraps that accuse Daniel of the crime. Ah, ah. Oh, so now it's their turn. I guess you could say that. Hey, look! The lions are waking up, and they look so excited to be pet. Those people are so lucky. This is going to be a petting zoo experience they'll never forget. Go, but we have to go. Wait, Gertie's not buckled up. There's no time. We have to go now. We are the time traveling trio. The Professor and... And Gertie's leg braces are back, too. Hashtag blessed. What an exciting adventure we had today. Ha <laughs> ha. We visited the famous children's Bible story of Daniel and the lion's den. Also, we missed the angel. We didn't miss Daniel putting his trust in God and continuing to follow his path, even when he ended up in a lion's den. In the end, God actually rewarded Daniel's face by making him the highest administrator in all the land. All right here in the Bible. And I didn't exit the time machine. That should be a given, Gooba. But I guess I can congratulate you for that. Who knew I could talk to Daniel while inside the time machine? Wait. You were serious? This episode is in the books. Literally, the Bible. Say cheese. <laughs> Hashtag time traveling trio. Duh, Gooba, stop posting pictures of the Dunspud. But she's a member of the TTT. Hashtag TTT. And stop saying hashtag. <laughs> Marsha, what are you doing? Spring cleaning. Where'd you even get this stuff? Oh, here and there. I've never seen you wear any of it. Well, for some reason, floating around in hot cocoa all day, I never get cold. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Stone, the Super Slam Rockwell, with a message about miracles. And our friend Fruitcake with exercise tips. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Happy Easter, everyone! Before we get to our hard-hitting interview, Stone the Super Slam Rockwell has challenged me to see if I can roll him over. Ooh, what do you get if you move him? I get to pick the music for the end of the show. But if I can't roll him over, then he chooses one of your songs? Do you really have your own music? Oh yeah, rock and roll. Amazing. Okay, let's do this. Are you ready to roll, Fruitcake? Okay, in three, two, one. Look like a challenge. It is. I can use a miracle right about now. Oh, oh, you know what you remind me of, Mr. Stone from the Super Slam? C can I call you just Stone? You remind me of the big stone they put in front of Jesus' tomb when they buried him after he died on the cross. It was really hard to move, too. 
But when Jesus' friends went to see him, the stone was rolled away. <gasps> How did they move it? Asking for a friend. They didn't move it. And if you think that's amazing, get this. Jesus wasn't there. <laughs> Oh, that's right. The Bible says Jesus' friends found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they looked inside, they didn't find him there. Yep, Jesus had risen. That was the biggest miracle. He was alive again and is still alive today. That is amazing. You think you're amazed? After Jesus' friends left, they saw him walking along the road. They were so surprised. Jesus had risen. He had risen indeed. Are you okay? Maybe we should roll to a clip. Oh, right. Rolling! Whoa, you're really rolling. That's rock and roll if I ever saw it. Looks like we'll be hearing that Marcia song after all, Mr. Stone. Tell us, what's the secret for getting you to roll? Oh, man, we're out of time. Thanks for being here, Stone the Super Slam. And Fruitcake, appreciate you reffing. We really wanted to hear about your exercise routine. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to my song? Granite, gravel, quartz, and lime stone. Gravel, pebbles, tough and soapstone. One day, as Micah was reading his Bible, he discovered something truly amazing. Six pieces of armor to defend himself against spiritual attacks. The armor of God. Now Micah's spiritual battles will never be the same. Put on the armor of God. There's a battle within and the enemy is sin. Put on the armor of God. It's the perfect metaphor for a spiritual war. Previously on the Armor of God, Micah forgot to study for a test and encounters a problem when trying to get his textbook from his locker. Thankfully, with the help of the Belt of Truth, he gets his textbook despite Hans's interference. Micah is now off to study with his friends in today's episode, The Chestplate of Righteousness. It's recess. That means kids are outside playing, Armin and Lydia are waiting for Micah to study, and Chet the school bully is up to no good again. Ha ha ha! Yes! Now everyone will know that I, Chet, was here. Hang on, then people will know that I wrote this. I got an idea! Hey, you! Who, me? Yeah, you! You see this? Yeah, you spelled was wrong. Shut your yap, yeah, punk! Listen, I don't want to get caught for spray painting this wall, so we're going to make it look like you did it. How are we going to do that? You're going to spray paint this wall, and it's going to say, Micah wrote this. Well, why couldn't you just do it? Because I want it in your writing. Duh. But I don't want to do that. Spray paint this wall. Now! Hey! Or your textbook gets it! I need that to study for the quiz or test. I, I can't remember, but I'll fail without that. With his textbook held hostage, will Micah spray paint the wall or say no to what is wrong and risk failing his test? Find out when we return after these messages. Hey friend, do you sometimes find it hard to do what God says? When you're not protecting your heart, you leave it open to bad influence. And that can lead to unrighteousness. Don't let the wrong influence affect you again with the chest plate of righteousness. When you wear the chest plate of righteousness, you protect your heart from the wrong influences, freeing your heart up to be influenced by the Holy Spirit so you can make the righteous choice. Righteous, dude! What are you waiting for? Sign this wall now! My textbook! <laughs> Micah has a choice between his textbook and vandalizing the school wall. What will he do? It's time to suit up. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Chest plate of righteousness. You can't force me to vandalize the school wall. It's wrong and I won't do it no matter what you say. It's more important to do what's right in God's sight. Then say goodbye to your mediocre grades. Hey, ah! who wrote this? Did you write this? 
I, uh... You're in trouble, mister. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Hey, where were you, Micah? We were supposed to study during recess. Sorry, I had a run-in with Chet. Well, I guess we'll have to study at lunch period. Ah, but that's sandwich time. What is this I hear? Micah will fail without the textbook? I think I might know how to get back at Micah. <laughs> Next time on the Armor of God, the Boots of Peace. You spelled was wrong. I know! Hey, Coco, I have a new segment for the show. It's called Fruit Facts. Want to see it? Sure. Fruit Facts! Did you know that apple in Spanish is manzana? I did not know that. That's cool. Fruit facts. And apples grow on trees in orchards. Well, yes, I did know that. Fruit facts. Also, apples make the best pie. That's not really a fact. Fruit facts. Wait, did you only get as far as apple in your fruit fact finding? Yep. Did you know that apples come in all shades of red, green, and yellow? Fruit facts. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest. Freddy the Fruit Cup with a message about the fruit of the spirit and our friend Fruitcake sharing his family tree. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. Fruitcake's cousin, Freddy the Fruit Cup is here today. Looking forward to seeing that family fruit tree. You know what they say. No, what? Fruit families love each other bunches. They are a sweet family. Speaking of fruit, we're talking about the fruit of the spirit today. Fruit is my favorite. But what's the fruit of the spirit? They're character traits we grow in when we live by the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's a lot of fruit. It is. There are many ways people can see God in us. Fruit is faith made visible. So, people will know that we have the Holy Spirit by our actions? Exactly! Others will see that we're connected to God and living by the Spirit through how we act. Just some fruit for thought. I see what you did there. So what does the fruit of the Spirit look like? Well, for example, kindness can look like sharing with others. Love can be using encouraging words, and patience can look like waiting your turn. Waiting my turn. Oh, I can do that. So Now's it my turn? Not yet. So to recap... Now's it my turn? Almost. So to recap, the fruit of the Spirit is... Love, joy, peace, patience. Mm-hmm. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You really picked that up fast. It's always more catchy in a song. Love, joy, peace, patience. Awesome. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, yeah. and it's going to be stuck in my head all day. You are welcome. We have a clip of Freddy during harvest season. Wow, what an exciting time. I wonder how long harvest is. Let's ask. Freddy, how long does it take to grow? Aw, oh, man. We're out of time already. Thanks for being here, Freddy. And Fruitcake, appreciate you sharing the stage with family. I still don't think they look alike. We don't really look alike either. You don't think so? Talk to y'all next time on Coco Talk. Love, joy, peace, patience,
One day, as Micah was reading his Bible, he discovered something truly amazing. Six pieces of armor to defend himself against spiritual attacks. The armor of God. Now Micah's spiritual battles will never be the same. Put on the armor of God. There's a battle within and the enemy is sin. Put on the armor of God. It's the perfect metaphor for a spiritual war. Previously on the Armor of God. After a close call with Chet, Micah still has his textbook intact, and Hans is devising a plan to get back at Micah. What is he up to? We'll find out on today's episode, The Boots of Peace. As Micah, Lydia, and Armin make their way to drama class, Hans is planning his trap for Micah. Let's see how he studies after I steal his textbook. <laughs> oh, yes, I come. I better hide. What is that? It's Mrs. Petunia's new food base play, The Lonely Ravioli. She wants people to sign up for it. The Lonely Ravioli? Who would want to be in that play? Whoa, what's this? A don't be in the play sign-up sheet? Well, I sure don't want to be in the play. I better sign it. I'll just put my bag down, write my name, and... (laughs) My bag! Where did it go? I had my stuff in there, including my textbook. (gasps) Ah! Micah! You signed up for my play! No, I didn't! Uh Uh-oh. You will be the Lonely Ravioli! But, but, Mrs. Petunia, I told you, I don't want to be the Lonely Ravioli. That's the spirit, Micah! Nobody wants to be lonely! Use it for the performance! And one, two, three! How are you going to study, Micah, now that your precious textbook is missing? And now you're going to fail the test! (laughs) Oh, great. I wonder what happened to my backpack. All my stuff was in there. My school supplies, my textbook, and my lunch. Am I going to start? Am I going to study? Will I fail the test? Or is it a quiz? I can't remember anymore. On top of all this, I'm in this dumb ravioli costume. Ah! What am I going to do? Micah's troubles are causing him to worry. Will it get the best of him? Find out when we return after these messages. Hey there, friend. Are your troubles making tremors? Spiritual storms making it too slippery to stand? Are the wings of worry whisping you away? Stand your ground with the boots of peace. Wear them inside, outside, when you're feeling anxious, confused, and when you don't know what to do. Wings of worry are blowing, but I'm not going anywhere. Thanks, boots of peace. Remember, Micah, this is an important line. You must give it gravitas. With his backpack missing, Micah's troubles are too much to bear. What will he do? It's time to suit up. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Boots of Peace. God, I know losing my backpack is scary because all my stuff was in there. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I trust you to help me today, so there's no need to panic. I'm the only ravioli, and if they'd only got to know me, I'm sure they'd make me goalie on their pasta hockey team. I think that's enough, Micah. Thank you for trying out. Uh, But uh, I think I need someone who can sing. So I don't have to be the lonely ravioli? All right. John 16.33 says, I have told you these things so that you can have peace because of me. In this world, you will have trouble. But be encouraged. I have won the battle over the world. You got out of playing so lonely ravioli, but I still have your backpack, which means you don't have a lunch or a textbook. (laughs) What's so funny? Hey, you found my backpack. Well, yes, I was holding it uh, for, for you. I wasn't trying to steal it or anything. Wow, that's a huge relief. I'll get you next time, Micah. Next time on the Armor of God, the Shield of Faith. There are stories in the Bible that are told when you're a child. But as soon as you're a grown-up, they no longer seem to show up. I guess grown-ups don't like action and they find no satisfaction. In these famous children's stories, do they think they are too boring? How about David?
David and Goliath There a stone took down a giant Orvin Jonah fled by sail But was followed by a veil And Noah's up, let's not forget A flood from God is kind of an Hail and the lions did say God is surely did not in our superheroes Since it's all he cut his hair Lots of dollar when the trumpet called it blood Lots of all the goes Y'all want to know my eyes of the show So let's go Back to the basics Wow! Oh, was that supposed to be recording? What? Moses! Pots of Red Sea Red Sea? It's blue water Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back for another episode of Back to the Basics. As always, I have with me Booba and Gertie, who are part of the TTT. That's the Time Traveling Trio. It's all so exciting. We are the first to travel back in time. This must be what Albert Einstein felt when he first introduced the theory of general relativity. <laughs> you mean Einstein. What? Well, you said Albert Einstein. It's actually Einstein. Ugh, Cuba. I think I know how to properly pronounce my childhood hero's name. Albert Einstein. Oh, well, that's not how his brother Frank pronounces it. Uh, Frank? Einstein? Frankenstein isn't Albert Einstein's brother. Albert Einstein was a real person. Dr. Frankenstein was a fictional character from a book. He wasn't real. Well, of course not. Thank you. Not until after the experiment. What? Pardon me, folks. Door was open, so I figured I'd just come on in and deliver this here package. Shook it a couple times on the way in, and I'm pretty sure it's broken. Although I did drop it, I'm almost positive it was broken before that. Think it broke when it fell off my bike. Oh, no. I totally forgot about her sponsorship. Before we close down her social media accounts, Gertie got sponsored by Cat Treasures. It's a company that specializes in turning the chore of cleaning out kitty litter into a fun treasure hunt for kids. I think those were some of the prizes to hide in the litter box. That is just gross. Kind of glad I broke it now. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we have a... The name's Doofus, Doofus Rufus. Now, I know what you're thinking. Doesn't Doofus typically mean someone not very smart? Well, yes, which is why my birth name is Doofus, because my mama said, in my world, every day is opposite day, which means I am a genius. Like Albert Einstein. Is that Frank's brother? Exactly. Ugh. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for the package, but you must be off. We have a show to finish. Hey, why are you wearing a life vest? This isn't a life vest. It's my P-F-D. Uh, what's a P-F-D? That, my friend, is called an algorithm. <coughs> Acronym. It means personal flotation device. Have you ever heard of a little lady named Katrina? How about a fine gentleman named Harvey? Do they work here? Those are the names of not one, but two hurricanes that hit the Gulf Coast. And guess where you live? In America? Which has a Gulf Coast, so... Any moment, a hurricane could hit you, bam, right out of nowhere. That's not how hurricanes work. One minute, you're just taking a stroll down a street, then the next moment, boom, you're covered in 50 feet of water. Well, guess who's floating right to the top of the water? This guy with the PFD. Oh, Professor, I don't have a PFD. Ugh. We have plenty of warning time before a hurricane hits, so there's no need to be scared. Now, can you please leave so we can finish our show? A show? Well, what kind of show are you making? We time travel. Ah, that's quite enough, Cuba. <laughs> ah, out you go. All right, all right, I'm going fine. Don't tell me what the show's about. I've got more packages to deliver anyway. It was nice to meet you. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you, Rufus. No, no, Doofus, Rufus. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, finally. Now, 
Zeva Oh, Professor, do you think we're gonna get caught in a hurricane? Gooba, you do not need to be afraid of a hurricane. We are told about incoming hurricanes days in advance, giving us plenty of time to prepare. Oh, I'm not afraid. It's, uh, it's Gertie. She's definitely worried. Ah, Gooba. Well, you see, God is in command of all things. Whether it is a raging hurricane or even a gentle breeze, God controls it all. Really? Of course. Did you know that there was a man that actually parted an entire sea through the power of God? What? That's incredible! His name was Moses! One of the greatest characters found in all the Bible. Gooba, I think we have just figured out who we're going to visit today. To the time machine. Checklist. Set the timer for Moses. Check. Set the time machine for a chicken. I know, Gooba, that may seem crazy, but it is one of the many domesticated animals that was most likely brought along when Moses led God's people out of Egypt. Check. Seatbelts. Check. I guess we both need to say this now. We, we will, will not intercede, intercede with, with the, the past. past. Well, that's surprising. You didn't say anything after that. Well, it's hard to. I don't know what intercede means. Ah, uh, well, let's go! We have arrived! Ha-ha! <laughs> I'm so excited about seeing the parting of an entire body of water. Ha-ha! <laughs> uh, Professor? Why is everyone running around like chickens? Except, you know, all the chickens. Well... At the moment, the entire Egyptian army is behind Moses and the people of Israel. So they're scared because they're trapped between the army behind them and the Red Sea that is in front of them. But I thought you said Moses parts the Red Sea and they walk through. These people don't know that yet. It's only easy for us to know since we read the entire Bible. Well, it sounds like these people need to read the Bible more. Well, Gooba, we need to figure out where Moses is and maneuver closer huh? to him. Let me see if I can locate... us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die here in the wilderness. Listen, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish today. For the Egyptians that you see, you shall see no more forever. Ah! Ah, we are headed straight for the crowd. Do you see this chicken? Although odd and shed of all of its feathers, plus a mind that seems to be slipping away, it's still ready to follow God's command. This one is totally on Gertrude. Gooba, we're ready about that when we get back. We must all be more like this chicken. So gather your things and get ready to move. <laughs> to where? Back towards the army? Or hey, Oh, what about into the Red Sea? Gooba, will you please get Gertrude back in her seat? Whew, finally, back under control. Wait, I see Moses heading up the hill. He must be going to pray. We must go. Hurry up, Gooba. Hurry up. Oh, no you don't, chicken. Let's get you back with the others. No! Of course this would happen. <laughs> Hello, Professor. I've got another package. Must have fallen off my bike before I delivered the last one. This one happens to be broken, too. Still not my fault, though. Just must be an entire batch of bad packages. Hello? Anyone there? Time we can't see anything. Oh, 
Moses is probably up on the hill at this very moment, standing up after praying to God. He's lifting his staff and raising his hands towards the Red Sea with the power of God running through him. The very water listens to his command, splitting apart and creating a dry pass across the Red Sea and over to the other side. Maybe if we tip our coop over the side of the wagon, it'll break! Hold on! Ha! 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 Ah! Here we go! Woohoo! Uh, was your goal to make things worse? No! <laughs> Professor! Goober? You guys in here? I just need a signature for this broken package. I also need a signature for that last package. Must have forgot about that. Oh, and I'll need one more signature saying that I was not the one that broke them. Be right back, the TTT. Well, what on earth does that mean? <sighs> Why didn't I pick something larger? Like, like, like a donkey. Oh, there are no donkey coops. Instead, I chose a chicken. And now we are stuck watching pigs, pigs of all things roll around in the mud. Ah, such majestic creatures. Oh God, why does it seem I always miss? All the important moments and I am left to dream and reminisce of things now left unknowing. Am I on the right path as I fumble along? Can you give me a sign if I'm doing this wrong? Stuck in a crate with some pigs. This in a chicken, I said. Foul life streaming to kids. Another story I miss. <laughs> oh God, to you I pray. The professor, he doesn't seem okay. And I would like to say something nice to make it painful. Fumble out of my mouth Look at that baby pig He's got mud on his mouth Stuck in a crate with some boots Their cuteness I can't resist Oh, wish I could give them a kiss But chickens do not have But wait, maybe I'm right to be here now. Look at his smile over the side. Oh, hey, I think he's good. He must have seen that piggy eating his food. I must be on the right path. No words did I need to say. Even showing up. Just the aftermath. Well, I did think they'd probably be wrong anyway. We owe it all to you. Thank you, God. Shall we do it in unison? What's unison? Cause we're stuck in a grave with some tears. That was a little bit too high. Whoa! We just rolled into a hallway. Maybe we're taking a bathroom break already. 
kids. We aren't going to pit stop all of these people, Gooba. What are you talking about? This isn't the hallway. It's a wall of water. We can actually see the wall of water. The mission is a success. <laughs> it is? Even if we're stuck in pig slop? I feel like I missed something. Well, our goal was to see how God is in control of all things, Gooba. In using the power of God, Moses just parted the Red Sea, and we're looking at it. Wait a second. These blue walls are the Red Sea. Where's the red? Honestly, people, we have got to get better at naming things. Let us be off! Boys and girls, we made it. And so did Moses and God's people. They crossed the Red Sea on dry land, and as Pharaoh and his army tried to follow them, the path across the sea closed, helping them to escape. So, join us next time for another adventure on Back to the Basics. I think Gertie should be the one to clean off the pig slop from the time machine. She's a bird, Gooba. And a dunce bird at that. Okay, then you can. You chose chicken. What? My Gooba? I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm old. I can't hear what you're saying. Fine, I'll do it. Maybe I'll paint it blue and call it the red time machine. Sheriff's Department. Okay, listen to this. I have verified proof that our world is about to be taken over by, wait for it, robots from the future. They call themselves the TTT. I need you to send a SWAT team, the police, a firefighter, an ambulance, an airplane, a helicopter. A submarine! Is that you, doofus? Uh, no. No, no, no. It's someone else. Someone really important. I'm so important, I can't tell you my name right now. Doofus, we already said you can't call here anymore. It's also your second robot invasion call. Technically, I could still be right about that first one. It only takes one refrigerator rising up and attacking its owner before that robot revolution starts, and then you will be calling me to apologize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goodbye, doofus. No, no, wait. I, I said goodbye, doofus. <sighs> well, I guess it's just up to me, then. One day, as Micah was reading his Bible, he discovered something truly amazing. Six pieces of armor to defend himself against spiritual attacks. The armor of God. Now Micah's spiritual battles will never be the same. Put on the armor of God. There's a battle within and the enemy is sin. Put on the armor of God. It's the perfect metaphor for a spiritual war. Previously on the Armor of God, after Han steals his backpack, Micah accidentally signed up for Mrs. Petunia's play. Thanks to the Boots of Peace, Micah trusted God in his situation and even got his textbook back. But the test is yet to come. Will Micah be ready? Find out on today's episode, The Shield of Faith. It's lunchtime, and while most kids are in the cafeteria, Lydia and Armin are helping Micah study in the library. Oh man, this isn't working. Hey, we wouldn't be here if you remember to study, Micah. I know, but why does it have to be so hard? I just wish there was an easier way. Well, it's not like Mr. Turtel is going to come here and hand you the answer sheet. Ah, uh, hello, students. It's me, Hans, in disguise. I mean, Mr. Turtel, your teacher. You seem shorter than I remember. Micah, because you're my favorite student. Favorite, favorite student? student? I'm giving you the answers to the test, which are not fake and totally real. Just like my disguise. Wow, the answer to the test? For me? Is Micah really your favorite student? Did you get a haircut or something? Well, I, I have to go for now to prepare for the teaching that I do because I'm a teacher. Bye. 
Uh, I'm sorry, not Hans. That was suspicious. I don't know if you should look at that answer sheet. But I wouldn't have to study, and I could pass the test. This could be my easy way out. I'd be crazy not to look at this, right? Uh oh. Will he accept what he thinks is the answer sheet from Hans? Not Hans. I mean, uh, Mr. Turtell. Find out when we return after these messages. Introducing the Shield of Faith. This revolutionary shield is unlike anything that you've ever seen before. With its sleek design and aluminium body, you can block the flaming arrows of the evil one. In style. Flaming arrows! Look out! Here they come! Ah! Temptation! Phew! That's right. Even the flaming arrows of temptation cannot penetrate the shield of faith. So you can continue to live your life in obedience. I didn't feel a thing. Thanks, Shield of Faith. Like all pieces of the armor of God, Shield of Faith is purely metaphorical. It will not protect against actual flying objects such as dodgeballs, apples, moldy apples, chickens, calculators, footballs, etc., erasers, etc., etc., etc. I don't know if you should look at that answer sheet. Will Micah try to take what he thinks is the easy way out? What will he do? It's time oh. to... Shh! Sorry. It's time to do that. Shield of faith. It might look like the easy way out, but that would be cheating. I have to put my faith in God and that he'll help me prepare. Sorry, Mr. Turtell. I can't take the answer sheet, even if I'm your favorite student. You're not. Now, can we get back to studying? Let's do this. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. You think a stunning montage is enough to save you from my revenge? I still have another trick up my sleeve. <laughs> Shh! Sorry! Next time on the Armor of God, the Helmet of Salvation! So, what are we doing on the show today? We do have something planned, right? Yes, we're talking about worship. Ooh, I love all kinds of ships. Me too. Fellowship and friendship. Face ships, battleships, baker ships. Wait, that's not a real ship. Don't forget about chocolate ships. You mean chocolate chips? Oh yeah, those are delicious. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, a worship band with a message about worship and our friend Fruitcake with a new song. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. We're so excited to have a live worship band here. They all play the worship? Is that an instrument? Um, not exactly. Worship isn't an instrument we play. It's what we do to show God our thanks and love. And music is one way to worship. The band is really great. Let's watch. Wait, why do we need to respond to God? Good question. We worship because we are in awe of Him. You mean like when I look at pictures of puppies and I say, aww? No, more like our God is like super awesome. Right, band? Oh, God is awesome. I've also heard God is indescribable. He is, and I'm pretty sure I've heard that song before. We worship to express our joy for his amazing grace. Hey, that sounds like a song too. It is. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I think we actually have a clip of the band playing that song. Let's play that. Wow, that was great. They know how to make a joyful noise to the Lord. I'm good at joyful noises too, like this. Yippee, woohoo, yay! Yay indeed. God has done so many things for us. He's a way maker. A light in the darkness. Hey, that's a song too. Yep, and don't forget, God created the universe. That is.
is awesome. No wonder we respond with worship. Why don't we hear the worship band play their music live? Uh, that's fine. Time to go already? Probably could have had them play instead of, um, playing a clip. Good to know. Well, thanks for being here, classroom band and fruitcake. We were really looking forward to hearing your new song. You can play us out on the triangle. Great idea. See you all next time on Coco Talk. One day, as Micah was reading his Bible, he discovered something truly amazing. Six pieces of armor to defend himself against spiritual attacks. The armor of God. Now Micah's spiritual battles will never be the same. Put on the armor of God. There's a battle within and the enemy is sin. Put on the armor of God. It's the perfect metaphor for a spiritual war. Previously on the Armor of God, Hans impersonates Mr. Turtel, and Micah is tempted to cheat on his upcoming test. But with the help of the Shield of Faith, Micah resisted temptation and studied with what little time he had left. Will it be enough to pass the test? Find out on today's episode, The Helmet of Salvation. Now class, put your books away. It's time for the test on quizzes. Make sure you answer your multiple choice questions in paragraph form. Did I hear Micah didn't study for the test? You did, baby! And from what I hear, this one's a doozy! Hey, I studied at lunch. Knowing your grades, Micah, I doubt studying will help. Why try if you're gonna fail anyways? Am I right, PB? That's great advice! I know, right? I'm just like that. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna fail. Why should I even try? Micah is beginning to be controlled by doubt. Will Micah give up hope? What will he do? Find out when we return after these messages. Have you lost hope? Bad thoughts invade your mind and you feel like giving up? There's only one thing that will give you the protection that you need. How about this cool ducky hat? No! Oh. The Helmet of Salvation! When you put on the Helmet of Salvation, you protect your head and your mind from damaging thoughts. God doesn't care about me. No! I'm a fan. No! I should give up. No! Now you can make sense of your situation and think logically about how God is working in your life. It's comfortable, it breathes, and I can clearly think about God's plan for me. Thanks, Helmet of Salvation. You're the best. Use the Helmet of Salvation strictly for spiritual attacks to the head. It's metaphorical. You're not used to headbutt a coconut. Who would do something like that? That would hurt. No, I wouldn't recommend it. Why try if you're going to fail anyways? <laughs> Micah is struggling with his thoughts. What will he do? Hmm. What will I do? Psst. That's your cue to suit up. Oh, yeah. It's time to suit up. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Helmet of salvation. I'm not going to listen to those doubts. Giving up is not an option. I have to try my best. And I know that no matter what, God loves me. Pass or fail. Philippians 4.8 says, Think about what is noble, right and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Well, class, time's up. I shall now come by to pick up your papers. Hey, Sir Micah. Why don't you let me take your paper? Boy, you've been really nice to me today, Hans. Thanks. You can thank me later. <laughs> now that I've got his test, I can switch it with a fake test that has the wrong answers. I just need to write his name on it and hand it in. Hey now, there's an enthusiastic young student handing huh? me his test. There's Micah's, and oh look, Hans, you were so eager to hand in your paper that you forgot to sign your name. There we go. I bet you're eager to get your results. We'll mark it right now for you. That's not mine. Wrong. I... Wrong. Huh? So wrong. But... Nope. No! That's bad. That's... Oh... Wouldn't have said that. Oh, this is not going according to plan. F. Huh? But, Mr. Tetel? Maybe you should study harder next time. Whoa. What's his problem? 
How'd you do, Micah? There are a few hard questions, but I think I did okay. That's great! Yay, enthusiasm! There you are, Micah! Huh? huh? Uh-oh. To be continued. Next time on the Armor of God, the Sword of the Spirit. I've always wanted to say that. One day, as Micah was reading his Bible, he discovered something truly amazing. Six pieces of armor to defend himself against spiritual attacks. The armor of God. Now Micah's spiritual battles will never be the same. Put on the armor of God. There's a battle within and the enemy is sin. Put on the armor of God. It's the perfect metaphor for a spiritual war. Previously on the Armor of God, PB&J plants seeds of doubt for Micah, but with the Helmet of Salvation, Micah's hope was restored and he was able to write the test. Hans tried to set Micah up for failure one last time, but when his scheme backfired, Hans attempted to ambush Micah and his friends in the schoolyard. What will he do? It's a showdown on today's episode, The Sword of the Spirit. You're going to pay, Micah! So, do you owe him money or something? Yeah, what's he talking about? I, I don't know, guys. Hans, what's this about? It's because of you that I failed the quiz the test. Of quiz test. Whatever. I've spent all day trying to ruin things for you. Huh? Do you know who made you sign up for us to play? Do you know who stole your backpack? That was me! But Do you know who dressed up as Mr. Tuttle and tried to give you some fake answers to the test? That was me! Again! Oh! See, Mike is not Mr. Turtle's favorite. I knew he looked short. Silence! You were trying to set me up. I also told PB&J that you didn't study. I even tried to switch your papers when handing it in. Hans, why would you do that? <laughs> because, Micah, I'm your enemy, so I must destroy you. I, I never did anything to you. Didn't you, Micah? When you took your textbook out of your locker, it all came crashing down on me. And then they laughed. They all laughed. I looked like a fool. Ever since then, I wanted revenge, but every time I set a trap, you somehow escape! But believe me, Micah, you won't get out of this one! Awaiting orders. Uber? Hans is robot butler? Uber! Avenge me! Fight mode activated. What are you doing? Micah. Micah! Whoa, look, there's a fight! Well, let's go check it out. Fight! 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 fight, 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 fight. Our man. Oh, sorry. You've crossed the line, Hans. Oh, I'm so scared. What are you going to do? Beat up Uber? A fight is about to break out, and Micah has lost his temper. How will it end? Find out when we return after these messages. Are you tired of losing your battles? Are the enemy's attacks too much to bear? Oh, no! Fight back with the Sword of the Spirit. When you combine God's Word with the understanding that comes from the Holy Spirit, the result is a spiritual weapon that can disarm your enemy and reach their heart no matter what the defense. Take that! Wow, it really works! The Sword of the Spirit can change hearts, so use it today! Huh? What's that? It's Micah, and he needs my help! What are you going to do now? Hans, you're going to pay for this. You should just walk away. I won't let this go. Micah! Micah! Babe, where have you been all day? I was in the commercials, learning about the armor of God. Commercials? Whoa, now that's meta. Micah, it's time for you to suit up. You know, like, put on the armor of God, Baba. No, I can't suit up now. This is personal. Not so fast. Uba, get him. I can't move. Uba! Micah! Wind up for the climactic final battle punch! You have to use the sword of the spirit! But I... Initiating punch mode! It's the final piece of the armor of God! I'm just so angry! Winding up! It's the only way! Ha 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 It's time to suit up! Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power! Put on the full armor of God! Belt of truth! Chest plate of righteousness, 
Boots of Peace, Helmet of Salvation, Shield of Faith, the Sword of the Spirit! When the enemy attacks, use the Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We gotta stop Uber! Come on! Any last words? Yeah, I do. Love your enemies. What? Hey, that's from the Bible! Do good to those who hate you. Huh? Woohoo! He's doing it! There's gotta be an off switch somewhere. Uh-oh. Bless those who call down curses on you. What are you doing? He's using the sword of the spirit! Pray for those who treat you badly. You can't be okay with this! You just can't be! The time's running out! I'm looking, I'm looking! Do to others no. as you want them but, to do to you. But I'm your enemy! What are you saying? You might have been mean to me, and I may have been angry at you, but I... I forgive you, Hans. You... you mean it? Launch deployed. Oh, but no! I found it! Good night, Uber. Shocking down. Phew! That was a close one. Well, at least someone got beat up. Come on, let's go. Uh, you saved me from that punch. Oh, Mommy. Oh, I don't feel so good. Come on, Hans. Let's get you home. Can I have some warm milk in a story time? <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Oh, boy! I love story time! Micah has made it through the day, through the ups and the downs, proving that when you wear the full armor of God, you can have victory no matter what the battle. Belt of Truth, Chest Plate of Righteousness, Boots of Peace, Shield of Faith, Helmet of Salvation, and Sword of the Spirit. God wants us to protect ourselves from the dangers of this world. But the armor of God is more than about just defending yourself. It's about showing others the power of God, even when things aren't going your way. And when you do that, who knows the hearts he'll change? There's hope for even the worst enemies. So show them what God's made of and suit up. Put the armor on, the armor of God. Put the armor on, the armor of God. When the enemy attacks, it's time to get real. It's time to put on metaphorical steel. The armor of God will help you in the fight. To win against sin, you gotta fight with God's might. You better suit up with the armor of God. You gotta do what's right to fight the good fight. Bell of truth, the truth will set you free. Chest plate of righteousness, thwart the Put 